Hey loudspeaker fans, welcome back to my garage. I got a special treat. I want to take apart completely the brand new DCX354. It's just shipping. We're gonna have production quantities in the next month or two. And I want to compare and contrast it against the existing DCX464 that we've had out for a couple of years now. I'm gonna take it completely apart, show you all the stuff I'm not supposed to, the diaphragm details, I got some drawings. We'll go through the whole thing and I hope you enjoy the differences between the two drivers. The main difference, and I can't stress this enough, is that this one is bigger. The DCX464 has a four inch mid and a two and a half inch high frequency coil. The 354 has a three inch mid and a two inch high frequency coil. So this one's got a little more power handling, a little more diaphragm area, although not as much as you might think, which we'll get into later. The first thing you're going to want to get if you want to take one of these drivers apart is a T25 driver. All these screws are Torx. Oh, sorry, T20. It's a T20 driver. All these Torx screws are Torx 20. And both drivers come apart pretty much the same. You can remove the high frequency motor. So there's the 464 high frequency section. This will void your warranty, so you know, just, you know. This 354 I'm taking apart is actually uh, the first one to enter the country. I have one on my desk from NAM, and I opened it up hoping to do this video, and uh, there, there's nothing inside of it, so I had to get another one. So some details are immediately apparent. I wanna show you the basic construction between these two drivers is pretty similar. The energy comes off of this high frequency diaphragm. The motor is all on the other side. So all the neodymium is in the top here. You can't see it without removing this little exponential thing. The energy comes off here and then follows this all the way out to the exit. And it meets up with the mid frequency energy right here. The mid comes out of these holes here. This is a patent pending device called a uh, impedance mismatch device. And that's what lets us have that really wide frequency overlap where you can see the, the high frequency and the mid frequency on the 354 and the 464 overlap for most of an octave. So there's a couple challenges in the smaller driver that the DCX354. The challenge number one is you want to keep as much low frequency capability as practical. Uh, but here you are losing a lot of diaphragm area going from a four inch to a three inch coil. Challenge number two is because the high frequency driver is smaller, you need actually much more high frequency extension out of the mid coil to meet up with the high. So you sort of need it to become um, even more complicated because you need the, the high frequencies to go further without losing much low frequencies. And I've always kind of said that, um, it's not really practical to get more than maybe four actives out of one diaphragm. It seems to be the limitation for a lot of our high frequency driver designs. And uh, that's certainly true here, but we found a new trick, which is why it's subject to a patent. So there's the two motor structures. This is the mid frequency motor. This is the high frequency motor. And these are the two diaphragms you can see. Uh, there's a lot less diaphragm avail area available there on the 354. The main difference is in the construction. The 464 diaphragm is a straight V. So that there's a surround kind of here. Maybe I can get an awl so I can point a little better. Here we go. So this is the surround diaphragm. Coil attaches down there. And then the same side, it's equal length. Diaphragm and then this little bump here is the surround. On the 354, there's, this is the subject of the patent. There's the coil, diaphragm. This little bump is not the surround. It is a ledge. This is the surround here. This is the ledge. And that ledge lets the 354 diaphragm act bigger at low frequencies. And then when it gets up to high frequencies, just this portion of the diaphragm works. And this part gets kind of decoupled so that uh, it behaves like a smaller diaphragm than it actually is. And it's asymmetrical. So the inside works a little bit differently because it's got a different, a narrower diameter to work with versus the outside to get the widest bandwidth practical out of this driver. You can see here 
that step. Here's the step I'm talking about on the other side of the step. So that's the surround. The surround here is just flat. And this is the step that separates the portion of the diaphragm that's gonna work at the highest frequencies from the portion of the diaphragm that's gonna work at all lowest frequencies, basically. So this is the internal construction of the DCX354. This is the mid diaphragm. All the motor's been taken out so that it's not in the way. So this is the mid diaphragm and the energy comes off the uh, opposite side of the coil and goes up and out. And then the high frequency diaphragm, here's the motor. I think the Neo is missing, but that's the pole piece. And the energy, it's driven by the coil here and then the energy goes through this little slot. What this drawing really shows well is the location of the impedance mismatch device here. We cut off the little um, crenellations so that you can see the path, but that's, it sits right there. And basically the idea is these slots are open enough for the mid frequencies to go out, but they're closed enough that they look like a wall or most of a wall to the high frequencies. So the highs see a high impedance path here and a low impedance path here. So they mostly avoid this path and their little teeny tiny wavelengths don't get bounced around in here and come back out. Whereas the mids can go right through and you can see on the production driver, this is the 464. The, this is the sort of phase plug slot. The diaphragm sits right here and the energy from the diaphragm goes through that slot and around and then comes out these holes here, recombines with the high frequency energy, and then continues on down this pointy thing. So between the impedance mismatch device, which keeps the drivers behaving well over a pretty wide frequency range, and there's another benefit to that, because you've got that driver overlap, this is free output. So these two combine and uh, add to uh, to be pretty much flat through here instead of down like 6 dB that you see here. And the result you get is lower distortion and higher output over that, that critical octave. And that octave is right in the middle of the consonants range of human speech, which is really important for intelligibility, especially if you're doing really long throw stuff. Thanks to our uh, testing partners, our incredible customers for driving us to do this sort of work and for all the testing they've done, the validation. Uh, and we're really glad that this big bet that we started taking back in 2015 has finally paid off.